Did it work? <laughs> What's up, guys? If you can hear me, I don't. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm on like a a streaming. Uh, I don't know, like a different streaming site, so I can uh, so I can screen share. I'm checking my channel here. This says, oh yeah, I guess it's working. <laughs> it's working. All right, cool, cool. All right, sweet. So I am <laughs> live right now. We're live right now. We're going to be going over some spots. We're going to be going over uh, structures on Google Maps, a um, couple other things. I'm going to basically go through. I don't think I'm going to be fishing Saturday. Uh, it's old lady's birthday this weekend, so probably won't be going out this weekend. But I am going to go through basically uh, what's up. Um, but I am going to go basically through like my whole process of what I would be doing if I was going fishing, um, basically going to pick out a day. So if you guys want to go ahead and use my plan, uh, according to like what I look at and stuff, uh, you know, be my guest, I probably won't be out there. So I won't be doing any, any of what I decide on doing, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to go over that. We're going to go over, you know, some other uh, stuff on Google Maps, uh, some other, you know, washouts, troughs, stuff like that, other kinds of structure. Um, yeah, break down the day planning. Um, got two viewers. Um, we are, we'll get, we'll wait for a little bit right now. I'm going to see if this screen sharing will work. Screen sharing. Share. Let me, let me see if that's working. I don't know if that's working or not, but uh, we'll find out here in a second. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll wait for out. a little bit right now. I'm going to see if the screen sharing will work. Let's see if it works. I, don't know. I can't see your guys' uh, – sorry, I got my phone doing some stuff in the background. Yeah, I don't think it's working. Let me see what I can do here. Because it doesn't seem to be working. Um, all right, we're back to this. Oh, can you see that? Can you guys see that? All right. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to figure <laughs> figure out the screen sharing before we get all deep into it. I think I do have it figured out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, okay. So we got the screen shared sharing uh, figured out. Now, if I can just uh, actually go to that. We'll see if that's still sharing there. Figure out the screen sharing. We'll see if the screen sharing is working. I don't know if it's working. Yeah, okay. So we got the screen share, sharing. Uh, if it's out. moving around. Now, if I can just uh, actually go to that. Oh, yeah. That so All right, cool. So we're going to dive right in here. Um, we're going to dive into... We're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk about structure here. We're going to talk about structure and different kinds of structure that I look for on Google Maps. Um, stuff that you can pretty much see on the satellite views, which is pretty cool. It's a very useful tool. I'm sure you've heard it from about every fishing YouTuber and Salt Strong. They, they talk about Google Maps and Bing Maps all the time, which I will talk about Bing Maps as well. Um, uh, let's jump in. Let's go. What's our what's our first topic here? Our first topic is going to be potholes. Potholes. We're talking about what potholes look like. Um, right here. Right here is a good spot right here. Here's a couple of potholes right here. You can see how we got some nice deeper little holes right here. Um, nice little example of some potholes. Um, 
you know, this place is riddled out here, potholes. Got all kinds of little uh, current potholes here. Um, these are probably not as dominant as some of the other ones. Like if I go, if we go up to Boquilla area, uh, Pineland area and stuff like that, this this spot right here has tons of potholes right here. Kind of like the spot, but it can get really, really shallow. These potholes are deep, but it can get really shallow. Comes right off that shoal right there. But yeah, potholes. That's what your potholes are going to look like on Google Maps. We get down back down here to Sanibel. This is this is our favorite area. This is our favorite area by far. You know, I've fished all over the sound. I've fished. I've fished pretty much everywhere. <clears throat> I've fished, uh, you know, Bulls, Bull Bay, Turtle Bay, stuff like that. 10K, Sanibel. Sanibel is where it's at. Um, Sanibel is definitely, definitely the better area. Um, next on the list we got here is um, Current Flow. I got, I got some good spots to show Current Flow. Current Flow. Anytime you see this, this big old, big old V-shaped thing with a nice big flat behind it, that's shallow water here, deeper water here, current just kind of comes in, flows through right there on the outcoming tide, <clears throat> excuse me, on the outgoing tide, uh, same thing, got some, got some spill out there, some sand spill out, that's what you're going to be looking for for current lines as well as, you know, stuff like this right here. Um, we got some other ones as well. This is like a dredge mark right here. That's not really a, a current line. Um, more subtle current line would be like one of these. This, is, this was kind of dredged, but you can see the current right here. This is kind of a more subtle trough of current flow there. Um, we also got some other troughs over here. I'm not sure if that was dug out or not, but uh, these ones, these ones probably weren't. You can see this, this circle, circleish one right here. Nice and troughs right there. Covering troughs right now. Um, Um, yeah, tides in or out. We went over tides in or out. Um, of course, you know, you can see where, where the tide, this is, this, this bay right here is a really good example of like what the, what the water's doing on the tides. You know, you got the incoming or the outgoing tide flush here. You got the incoming tide flush here. Um, also right here, um, you know, you got your outgoing tide kind of flush right there and then you got your incoming tide right here which are flush right there around this corner which is actually one of my spots um let's go right into some spots i got fly flying around my office let's go over some spots uh tarpon bay you guys know about tarpon bay all right here um all right here in tarpon bay it's a it's a good area right here um, we got the cor front corner. Front corner is always taken over. As you can see, there's always some boats here. There's always somebody there. Kind of hard to get there, but uh, got to be first one. Back corner, of course. A lot of these spots, you know, I've been fishing a lot of these same spots um, that I have in my original video, uh, original videos of spots. Um, I don't fish the back corner as much. Uh, actually, I haven't fished that in a really long time. Um, McIntyre, I'm pretty sure I showed McIntyre. Um, all this, all this incoming, uh, incoming uh, tidal flow right here. This little trough right here is really, really good on this mangrove line. Oh, that was a uh, another thing I kind of wanted to talk about uh, when I talk about spots. I'm not necessarily like, oh, this corner at this tree you know i don't really consider a spot 
I mean, yeah, that's a spot. But um, when I say spot, I'm meaning like, you know, I'll pull up to a spot and I'll literally fish like this whole back corner right here. I'll pick like where to stop. I usually stop around here, uh, right where this notch is right here. There's a couple more uh, creek mouths and stuff down here. You can see the the flow coming out. But I normally don't go all the way up there because the shoal is pretty pretty shallow up there. Uh, mainly just stick to this back little trough. But anyways, that's what I mean by uh, spots. Uh, mainly mean like a bank or you know a certain island or a certain you know area that I fish um, with lures. You know, you're not really staying in one spot. You're kind of moving around. So. Uh, yeah, uh, McIntyre uh, Creek, of course, this whole trough coming in is really good uh, on an incoming tide. I like it, uh, ex like especially right here. Uh, incoming tides can be really good. You're going to get a lot of water movement. Of course, on the outgoing tide on this bank, you're going to get uh, more water movement than on the incoming. Uh, as you can see, that water kind of comes out and crashes along this bank and works its way down. I've actually caught some really good uh, snook and reds in this area. Um, I know some other people that have as well. Um, I call this No Name Bay, Sanibel Bayous. This is a No Name Bay to me and the people that uh, I fish with and stuff. We call this No Name Bay because it doesn't have a name to it when you zoom in. Uh, haven't fished this side, I think. I think I put that in one of my first couple of videos. I'm not sure. Um, I'm pretty sure I put this bank here, like that bank, like this bank, like this corner right here. Um, this is ground zero. This is where I had that, uh, what I think was a 40 inch snooky eaten in half by a shark. That was right here at this, uh, this little stretch of uh, mangrove right here. Um, back here, back potholes. I think I shared these as well. Back potholes. This was in my last night fishing video. This is where I called all of them the little tiny rat reds. Um, good back holes back here. Caught some rat reds back here. Nothing crazy recently. Don't fish this creek anymore. Um, I've drove through there a couple times, haven't seen anything crazy. And of course, this Google Maps is not updated since Hurricane Ian. So it's kind of uh, kind of iffy to go off of this right now because some of the spots have changed, not necessarily because of the topography, but the, the trees have changed. And uh, I've found that a lot of spots. Well, hello, Lemus. I'm doing a live stream. You have to get out. Come on. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Come on. What is that? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> nosy nosy. But yeah, anyways, um, I've drove through there a couple times. Haven't seen anything crazy. Uh, haven't seen like bait like I usually do. You know, normally when I pull up to a spot, you know, you're looking for you look for bait. You look for water movement. You look for all kinds of stuff. Hard working by you, of course, you know, the in, in right here, really good for incoming tide. Um, don't fish the outgoing tide right there too often. Although I have fished this back corner here, uh, this back corner here has been pretty good. You can see there's like a little bit deeper of a hole here with a Creek mouth. Oh, uh, we'll move right down the sound here, right down this side of the sound. Uh, this is one of my most more recent videos here. Uh, my, this bank was loaded with fish, but I lost the only two monsters. This was this bank right here on the outside. Uh, we started here and worked our way all the way down. I've also hooked into a couple of other bigger snook, uh, and stuff down here on this line, uh, on the income. I, we fished this on both tides, uh, better tide was on the incoming I like the incoming. A lot of guys like the out, outgoing tide. Uh, I think the incoming tide's a little better. I like the incoming tide, especially for summertime. We got the cooler water coming in with the with the incoming tides a little better. Um, closer towards redfish. Um, we fished this area before. 
Did all right. Seen a bunch of snook before the storm. Seen a bunch of snook in this bank area here, hidden up in the trees so deep that you couldn't even cast at them if you were just throwing a paddle tail on. No hook. <laughs> Wouldn't even get up there. But yeah. Uh, redfish. Haven't done. Uh, oh, got the docks. We'll give away the docks. Let's give away the docks. This is a new spot here that I didn't cover in uh, my last video. My last spots video here is these docks here. Um, this dock is pretty much gone. This dock is pretty much gone now. Um, it's got a little bit left to it, um, but not much. And these trees, of course, they don't look like this no more. Um, <clears throat> this dock right here, this one right here with the with the two boats was the dock that I fished in my video, my insane dock fishing video, the most recent one. That was this dock right here. These docks right here were the couple videos before um, where I said, oh, all the snook and pine island are over here. <laughs> that was all these uh, docks pretty much going down this bank. But yeah, those docks have been pretty good. This is super shallow up in here. I want to do some sight fishing on these flats um, during wintertime. Real sandy flats here, but they're really, really shallow. But uh, there's a couple of a couple of uh, bars that stick out. Where's it at? I think it was that that may yeah this one right here. This is kind of this is like really shallow. Comes out of the water, and you can't really see it on Google Maps. But there's like a slight trough that goes around it, kind of right here. That goes around that shoal. Pretty pretty nice looking. <clears throat> oh. Jeez, I can't believe I forgot about that. I forgot about that because there's really not a lot of them around in the sound. Um, they're kind of hidden pretty well, but it's uh, oyster bars. Oyster bars. Kind of hard to find. There's a good one. Mm, it's a good one right here. There's a couple. There's more. If you're looking for oyster bars, you might as well just go in that shit. Because there's plenty of oyster bars for you to find up in there. But there's an oyster bar right here. This is what your oyster bar is going to look like on Google Maps. Pretty uh, dominant. A lot of the other ones will look a lot browner. Um, where's the other one here? Here we go. This is a big, this is oyster. This is oyster here. You can see that. Um, I thought there was, there's, of course, a... Uh, what do they call this? Bokelia rocks up here, I think is what they call it. Or Jug Creek rocks or something something like that. Um, but yeah, there's some oyster bars. Here we go. Some oyster bars up here uh, mixed in with these shoals. Uh, Captiva rocks. Yeah, they call it Captiva rocks. But yeah, Captiva rocks, that's what your uh, uh, oyster beds are going to look like. Let's go back to spots. We'll go back to spots here. Uh, North Captiva. Haven't done anything really good around North Captiva. Somebody comment and mistake me if I'm wrong, but I just don't really see a lot of crazy stuff or a lot of crazy structure. Um, I mean, there's this boathouse here, but I've never really like fished it, fished it. Um, I have fished this flat right here uh, going in. Didn't really fish much. You know, we fished these potholes stuff out here, but we didn't, we all, we caught with some trout and stuff like that. Uh, let's go further into some spots here. Um, I think I shared all this stuff over here. I don't do a lot of fishing on this side of the sound. Don't do a lot of fishing on the Bokelia side. Let's go over here. Oh, new spot, new spot. I'm going to give away a new spot, a real good new spot. Um, Panther, Panther's pretty good. I've, I've, uh, caught some stuff around Panther and around these islands right here. Uh, these potholes back here and in the front on a higher tide, I've caught some redfish out here, uh, kind of near these pinch points. Uh, I heard, but I don't know if they still are, but the tarpon have been 
back here in these back bays. Here we go. Um, Cork Island has been pretty decent. When I do get over there, there's this really nice trough right here. Really nice trough right there. Got some good water movement right there, too, on the outgoing tide. Not so much on the incoming. Um, of course, because that corner is kind of blocked from the incoming and this shoal kind of blocks it. But this spot was the new spot that I really wanted to show. Got right behind Pumpkin Key. I've seen a few boats back here, but nothing crazy. I've caught some pretty good uh, reds along this mangrove line here, but the key points that I was really fishing were around these little uh, little islands. They're mangrove islands, so they're really, or I'm sorry, they're oyster bed uh, mangrove kind of islands. So pretty nice, nice and shallow up here and sandy, even though it doesn't look like that in this. It is pretty sandy back here. You can see right here, it's pretty sandy. But a lot of, found a lot of redfish back there. A lot of redfish, a couple snook, but mostly reds. Um, there is a creek mouth back here that I think, you can see this, these veins right here. That's a, what I like to call a creek mouth. Nice little current flow coming out from this marsh area here on like a high tide. That stuff's going to come pouring out of there. But yeah, uh, not too many fish uh, down here in this corner. More uh, the more fish were more fish were up here in this area by these oyster bed island kind of things. Haven't really fished the the main cut right here because there's a lot of uh, boat traffic through here. A lot of boat traffic through through that area. There's a residential stuff back here so a lot of uh, a lot of people come from back here kind of blasting out of there so i don't fish that area as much uh rocky creek um i don't know if i put this in my last um i don't know if i put this in my last video sorry about the interruption uh don't know if i put this spot in my last video but this is another set of creek mouths back here um, crick mouth right there, crick mouth right there. Um, and then there's another bigger Creek back here that flows out and all these spots right here. Um, I fish more on a outgoing tide or on like a half tide middle of the day sight fishing in the winter time type thing. Um, although I will go hit these spots on like a high, high tide, um, it during the summertime when I'm not sight fishing for reds, which most of the time in the summertime, if you're not getting out there at first light and catching a couple of fish within the first couple of hours, you're, you're doomed. A um, couple of nice spots right here. Um, you can't really see on Google maps. This is kind of one of those spots where you just kind of got to go there, but it's a little deeper right here on this mangrove line. And uh, it's got some pretty good overhangs and the trees are still green there. Uh, nice little current flow here, current trough here, but haven't really caught anything right there. I'm going to try that spot again because it's really sandy right here. Not much uh, structure. Um, I'm going to try that again for sight fishing during the winter time and see how that goes. Um, regla. Regla is always good. Pretty much any, any time of the year where you can get up close to the islands, there's probably going to be some fish around Regla. It's a pretty good, pretty good spot. It's right here on the edge of like the main sound, the deep, deep spot. It's like one, one of the only island, like barrier islands. You, you can call it that um, from Pine Island. This stuff, this stuff back here is like all, it's not shallow, but it's not deep, deep, you know, like this, this main stuff out here. You know, this is your main sound, and then you got your your nice shoal up in front of Regla. Um, haven't done anything up behind the shoal because that's more or less wintertime stuff. But have done, I have caught a couple of fish and seen some good fish in these holes right here on the north tip of Regla. And of course, this oyster island it always has a lot of mullet around it, and I always see some people fishing it but uh 
I've never really caught anything great off of it. Uh, moving down, pretty sure I put that spot in my last video here. Um, my last spots video. Did fish this stuff after the storm? Like late winter, I want to say it was. And seen a good little bit of redfish, but just a heads up, this right here, real shallow, real shallow, kind of shallow here. And then it starts to get a little deeper around these bigger, these bigger creek mouths and stuff. I, it's shallow up in here, shallow in here, if I can remember correctly. Um, but yeah. Yeah, this spot, I'm pretty sure I put that on my last spots video. McKeever, don't do much with McKeever, but this is a good example of current line and reading current line to pick a spot. So you can see this current line right here coming in. This is where your water's going to be flowing. Uh, mostly water flowing here. You got your water flowing through here. And, of course, your water flowing through here and around the corner. Um, but, yeah, on the in on the uh, outgoing tide, I'm sorry, the outgoing tide, this, this area right here is going to be moving water. Uh, this area right here is going to be moving water. Um, just a really good example of uh, some current lines and trough areas. Chino. North Tipicino, pretty sure I released that in my last spots video. Really good spot. Pretty sure I released the south tip of Chino in my last spots video. Really good spots right there. Um, I fished the front bank mostly uh, the last couple of times I've fished it. Not too great, although one of my most more recent videos, Kyler caught a really good one right here. Um, York, backside of York, pretty good, pretty good. Um, I did fish this once, didn't really see a whole lot. It's like really, when I was over there, it was like really thick grass. There wasn't much potholes and stuff, although it looks like there is. Maybe when the, uh, seaweed, uh, turtle grass stuff starts to go a little dormant during the winter, maybe it'll pop up some potholes or something, but. Most of what I saw back there when I did go back here was just really, really thick grass. Um, don't do much in long cutoff. Fished this in the wintertime, really low tide. Caught some black, a uh, couple of small black drum there and some small redfish. Um, back, like I said, the backside of York here is pretty good with these potholes here. And the water moves pretty, pretty good right here. Um, Water moves pretty good back there behind there on a uh, decent tide. Uh, haven't fished these docks in a long time. It's pretty shallow up there. This shoal, it's like covered in needlefish. You might find a redfish or something wandering around up there sometime. Uh, this bank I put in my last spots video. Haven't fished this since the storm, I don't think. I don't think I've fished this since the storm. Um, I'll have to go check that out soon. I'll have to go check that out. Uh, this bay back here, usually pretty good. The site fish some reds back in this bay. It's pretty deep. If you go more towards this island, you can kind of see there's a little kind of a deeper trough right here. Um but don't come in and try to cut this curve because it's real shallow right there. All right. So now that we've gone over some spots, I think that's like mostly what I've been fishing. Um, that's mostly what I've been fishing. Um, not, not ready to give away the night fishing spot yet. Not ready. In the wintertime, I promise you, you guys, I'll give away the night fishing spot in the winter time once it starts to cool down, and I'm not night fishing that spot anymore because <laughs> I've already told I've already told some some people. So uh, I will definitely, I promise, I will let you guys know where that spot is 
and I will break down that whole spot and I will zoom in as far as I can and show you guys every little detail about that spot when winter time comes. Um, let's jump. I'm back here. Let's jump. Uh, let's jump back into. Uh, doing the day planning. Uh, there's a few apps I really like to use. I really like to use like, uh, let me pull it up on my phone here. Cause it looks a lot different on my, on your phone than it does online. It's not going to look the same. Um, wind finder. Let me turn down my brightness so you guys can see wind finder. Really good app. Um, I like to use it for wind direction and speed pretty accurate it has screwed me over a couple times but uh but i use wind finder uh you can use windy as well it um that works as well um then i have fishing points that's the app that's what the symbol looks like fishing points i actually pay for this app this is like one of the only apps that i i pay for um, so that I can see into the future of tides. I can literally go, I can go months and months and months and months of predict. They're predictions, of course. They're going to change probably a little bit over, over the time, but, uh, depending. And of course, tides are all depending on, uh, wind and stuff like that. All kinds of different stuff. Um, I guess I've been showing you guys my forehead this whole time. Um, fishing spot, uh, fishing points, wind finder and Google maps, three, three, uh, three apps or, uh, phone, uh, programs that I use all the time. I'm looking at them like weekly. When I show you guys my process here in a minute, I do this like every day. I, I look and see if the wind changed. I look at the, uh, I look at the wind a couple days before, see what the wind was doing a couple days before, the night before, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let's get in. We'll get into uh, how I go about um, how I go about uh, picking a spot and uh, really going through uh, all my apps here and finding what spots are going to be better for a day. Let me pull up wind finder here. Let me pull up wind finder. All right, we got wind finder here. Here, let me tilt this up a little bit so you guys can see. Oh, peep those right there. Peep those, those are face masks. Floco Apparel, make sure you guys check out the website uh, after this video. Uh, yeah, let's go to wind finder. It looks really, really weird on um, on desktop. I don't like it. It's not showing satellite view and it's not showing really good color, uh, on the app, on the app. You can see, I'll show you guys really quick. Let me turn that off on the app. You can, you can see like it, it really defines the color on your phone. Let me go to a little bit windier or a little less windier. Yeah, there's a little less windier. It's nice and purple. The color uh, color coding really works a lot better on the phone. So if you're you're doing it, look on the phone instead. It's a little better. Uh, let's go look at the the wind for Saturday. Right now we're gonna. This is this is what I start off by doing. I look at the wind first. I'm gonna find out what the wind's doing Saturday 9:23 right here, uh, 8 a.m. Looks like we're gonna have a Wind coming out of mostly the east. It's like a northeast wind, but looks like mostly. Ooh, a little rotation there, huh? Um, but yeah, so gonna be mostly coming out of the northeast. Northeast, mostly coming out of the east. Uh, Eleven a.m. Same thing. Two p.m. Same thing. Five p.m. Same thing. 8 p.m. same thing. At 8 a.m., 
what's the wind looking like? Wind speed 12. Let's see. I don't know if I trust this desktop model because hang on, let me see if it goes up. Okay, yeah, see that's a little, that's a little better. So on my phone here, let me bring this down again. On my phone here, you guys can see the wind is like a little bit more heavier. You can see the lighter shading up here than down here. This is like a little bit less wind. This is more wind. You can kind of see with the animation of the um, with the animation of the streaks. That's what really slow wind looks like. The streaks are going really slow and they're small. So at 5 a.m., it actually says it's going to be ripping pretty good on my phone. So at 5 a.m., it says it's ripping pretty good. Um. So really, I, I'd probably stick close to this part of the sound over here. Probably stick into the uh, the east side of the sound. Try to stay away from the wind. You know, I'm in a smaller boat, so I try to stay away from the waves as much as possible. This here can get rowdy if the wind picks up. It can get really rowdy out there in the middle of the sound and on the flats over here. So it's... Uh, Really not that great of an option to go fish like the passes on a day like or on a morning like this where it's, you know, blowing pretty heavy over here. 15, 14 miles an hour is pretty heavy. I mean, the waves are going to be kind of sheltered. Uh, some of the areas are a little sheltered by the shoals, depending on what tide it is. But uh, mainly it's going to be pretty rough on these shorelines over here if it's if it's in the wind. So I'd pro probably stick over here Saturday. Saturday, I'd probably stick into the, the east side of the, the main sound here. Um, and it doesn't, the direction doesn't seem to change. And it does the same thing on my phone. Although at like 11 and 2 p.m., it gets really light, like you guys saw. Uh, it gets really light there. So next thing I'm going to do after I figure out what the wind's doing, uh, let me show, let me see what the wind's doing a couple days before. Let me see about Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, we got pretty much. Today was the last day. It's. Uh, some storms right there. That's what that is. Wind direction change. Probably storms right there. Friday. The the dominant wind, though, you know, without it being storm, the storm driven rain uh, pockets. It's pretty much like a north northeast wind from today on i think yeah it's 8 a.m 11 a.m yeah that's that's probably right there that's probably a storm yeah if you can see it's like really really light that's probably just rain um yeah saturday but yeah so a couple days before still coming out of the northeast so yeah i'm still gonna stick because all this all this stuff over here is gonna be rough it's gonna be big getting beaten up by waves the last couple days which isn't necessarily bad you know, redfish, though, redfish and snook, they'll kind of uh, be attracted to waves crashing on the bank, kind of stirs up the crabs and the bait and stuff like that for them to feed on. So the wind can help you and the wind and the waves can help you sometimes, but it's not like super, super important that you go chasing after the waves. Uh, after I'm doing that, I'm looking at the tides and I could not find a really good website on desktop to pull up the tides. I really, really, really like the fishing points app for tides. It has all kinds of stuff as you can't read that because of course it's all flipped around backwards, but it's got fish activity, which I, I want to say, I believe in the fish activity, but really realistically it goes off of moon and it goes off of the beginning and the end of tides. That's what that fish activity stuff is. Um, fish activity it has wave predictions, it has tides, it has the weather predictions, which I don't really trust it for that. But uh, it has a solar lunar, which I use a lot for my night fishing trips to see um, when the when the sun's coming up or when the moon's coming up and when it's uh, setting. Uh, that's really important for your night fishing trips. Just a little key information right there on a night fishing trip. Um, really like a moonrise on a on a night fishing trip. Anyways, 
tied for Saturday. See what we got here. Tied for Saturday. Let me flip my phone sideways so you guys can kind of. Eh, that might not be better because you can't see the top of the top of the crest here. Tied for Saturday looks a little bit like this. We got a, a 440 uh, in the morning high tide, and this is for uh, St. James City, um, St. James City Galt Island, if I'm not mistaken, was the tide station I picked. Yeah, Galt Island, uh, St. James City is where that tide is. And that's what it's going to look like. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not Saturday. This is Saturday. Saturday is looking like this. 7, 17 in the morning. We got a high tide of 2.3 feet. And it's going out pretty much all day. Not really an ideal tide that I like because I like the incoming tide, of course. But I do like that there's a lot of water in the morning. A lot of water in the morning. That's really going to play into us fishing that east side of the, of the sound. Let me bring back Google Maps here. I'm going to bring back Google Maps. So, with what I've saw with the wind and the tides, we're going to have a lot of water up here. This is where... This is where the tide station is that I picked. So at 7.17 in the morning, they're predicting that it's going to be two, two feet up on the tide, high tide at 7.17 in the morning. Um, the wind is going to be blowing from the northeast. So it might be like, it's not like a crazy wind, like 20, 30 miles an hour. So we're not going to see that much uh, effect on that high tide, uh, maybe like 0.2 maybe 0.3 of a foot we might see uh, of a of a uh, effect from the wind uh, so anyways so let's look up here I really like the crick mounts and honestly yeah yeah we first light no doubt about it since the reports I've been seeing thanks for thanks to the guys on the kayak group. Fort Myers kayak group. If you guys aren't uh, members on that page and you kayak fish, you should check that out. A lot of good people on there. Uh, they know what they're doing. They know how to catch fish. Um, yeah, right here, tarpon. Seen that the tarpon bite has been pretty good back here in these back bays. So honestly, first light, outgoing tide, high tide outgoing, I'm hitting this. I'm hitting this bank right here. I'm starting here. I'm working down with top waters. I'm fishing the bank at first, trying to draw out some redfish. Because uh, when that tide comes up, them redfish are going to dig it, dig up in the trees, trying to get some crabs and stuff. So I'd probably fish some top water, um, top water or paddle tail. Paddle tail is a little iffy back here because it gets some nasty weed stuff uh, on the bottom because there's really this bank here. Uh, fish these crick mouths that are going to be they're probably going to be spitting some water out um yeah probably fish this bank here with some top waters or paddle tails trying to pull some redfish out the mangroves or some snook or even some uh reds that are staged up um they'd more or less be staged up i think here and uh here ready to eat some some bait coming out of this crick mount here that's going to come out of this marsh and stuff here they're going to be staged up probably here ready for that stuff to come out of that crick mouth and then along this back bank the wind is going to be blowing into this back bank so it might get a little iffy to fish it might get a little bow in your line but it wouldn't really be no big deal uh but yeah yeah this bank i'd probably fish up this whole bay me and uh, Casey did catch some tarpon back here. They were just sitting in this hole right here. And uh, I think Casey caught a tarpon that day. If I'm not mistaken, he landed a tarpon that day. We both got like tons of blow ups. And this was only like uh, a few months ago, I think. Um, we did have a video on it. Uh, it did go on the YouTube. Um, but yeah, I'd probably fish this first light, fish this area, this bank coming in. I'd, I'd be having my eye. I'd be, I'd be looking out there every other cast. I'd be looking out there. 
And if I'm not fishing top water after I cast, I'd probably be looking out here to see if there's tarpon rolling and stuff with that. How the tide's going to come out of this creek mouth. It's going to come out of this creek mouth. It's going to come out of this creek mouth. And they're going to stage up right here, ready to eat some crabs and some shrimp and stuff coming out. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I'd be keeping my eye as I'm fishing down this bank. I'm keeping my eye. I'm, I'm looking out here. You really want to be paying attention to your top water for followers and stuff. So I don't recommend using a top water and looking out all the time, but definitely keep your ear open for some, for some swirls and some tarp and rolls and stuff like that. Um, after that, probably depending on how much action there is back there. If I see bait, if I see tarp and rolling, if I see uh, some other stuff, sweetie, I'm doing a live stream. You're going to have to give me a little bit. Um, but yeah. What, sweetie? I can't stop it when I walk, when walking to here. Well, why are you walking back here? It's probably just some gecko. Go. Go, sweetie. Oh, Jesus. There's a door there. I've been sitting for too long. But yeah, probably fish this for a couple hours. Sorry about the interruption. <laughs> for those of you that have kids, you know the deal. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, probably depending on if I see bait, tarpon rolling, if I get some followers on the top water, that all depends on how long I stay back here looking for some fish. Of course, that tide's going out, but it's going out pretty slow, so you would have a good little bit of time back here. Uh, after that, hmm, outgoing tide. I'd probably, de I'd definitely swing by this by this right here on my way out like if i was to go out when i leave this spot i'd definitely go hit this bank right here on my way out then i'd probably blast um it's gonna be pretty windy so i wouldn't really recommend the out in the open area although you might find a couple of redfish back here but I don't. I don't think I would fish that. I don't think I'd fish that at all. I'd probably. I'd go straight. I'd. I'd, I'd go straight to Regla. I ain't gonna lie. I'd hit Rocky Creek Crick Mouths. That's what I call this. Rocky Creek Crick Mouths. And uh, then I'd go straight to Regla. I'd start right here. This was one of my recent videos. I started here, and worked in, and uh, caught some fish. Right here was the better redfish. Sweetie, I'm busy. You gotta go. Okay. Yes, I will when I'm done with my live stream. <laughs> I gotta wrap this up soon. Let's go for <laughs> let's go for some a uh, couple more spots here, really quick, guys, and we'll wrap this up. But finish out finish out the day here. So I would fish this. I would start here, fishing through here, fish this mouth coming out. There's a little cut through here that uh that flows out some water, of course. This cut through is going to flow out some water. This cut through is going to flow out some water. But yeah, I definitely fish regular. Start here and work my way around this, um, around this bank right here and fish this. This is going to be a good spot for the outgoing tide as well. The water kind of rips around this corner right here. And there's a pothole right here. Pretty deep, pretty deep pot. Well, I wouldn't say it's pretty deep. It's like three feet deep, but considering if you've ever been around regla, everything else is like one foot. So for that to be deep, you know, two, two foot deeper, two and a half foot deeper is a big, big, uh, significant piece of structure right there. But yeah, the current rips pretty good around that corner after regla. Hmm. Depending on how much time you spend at those two spots, if it's almost midday, if you get into a lot of fish here and here, or if you don't get into a lot of fish here and get into a lot of fish here, say it's like 10 in the morning, I'd come, if it's like 10 in the morning, I'd come up and fish this stuff here. Uh, I'd probably start over here since the wind's coming out of the northeast. Probably start over here, wrap around this corner, fish this little area here, wrap down through here, fish around this bank, um, fish around that bank right there. 
Um, after that, tide's going to be starting to get pretty low. Well, pretty low. You're looking at looking at about midday. You're going to be, yeah, 12. You're going to be looking at like one, one foot up. Not super low, but low enough to kind of probably move me out of that area. Uh, probably go hit up the park. Been doing really good through here. This is going to be a pretty good spot for Saturday outgoing tide. The, the, the water is going to be uh, hitting this bank and flowing out of here. Uh, this bank as well going to be a good tide. The tide's going to be moving out of here and going around. Um, also, not much really more. I, I really, really hate outgoing tide fishing. I do. I really do. All of our, all, all of these good spots in like, you know, in the park, you know, are good for the incoming tide. You know, you see the water coming in, it's hitting the bank, it's splashing against the, or it's hitting against the the bank there and running across. You know, those are, those are the, the better spots that I like to fish uh, on incoming tide. But uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, after the park, probably be pretty hot out it's a really big thing this time of year the water is cooling off but you uh can't really can't really uh get too much after first light and you know you get for a couple fish at first light and you'll be in good shape good shape a couple fish at first light um it gets hot a month ago the water temp was 90 95 i think i saw 97 one day i was like she and we were uh we were by the pass <laughs> which was pretty crazy for that much uh that high water temp even by the pass it has been cooling down uh recently um night fishing is probably the way to go on uh summertime trips but yeah that uh We'll probably end off. We're gonna end off the stream there. I appreciate you guys. Uh, bleh, appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all you guys that support. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned in. We're gonna be doing some more giveaways on the whaler. I just want to give a heads up. The whaler has a capacity, unfortunately. So it's like, I hate to discriminate. Like I want to take everybody out. I want to be able to take everybody out. I really do. But it's like it's really hard to get anybody out on the whaler that's like over two twenty. Because the, the boat just won't get on plane. And the boat does have a capacity itself from the U.S. Coast Guard. Um, it gets rough out there on the whaler. And you're sitting down on the front in the front seat. So you're going to be. <laughs> so gets a little rough there. Um, other than that, man, if you guys want to come out on the whaler, make sure you guys stay tuned in for those giveaways. Going to be doing more gear giveaways. Going to be doing more apparel giveaways for sure um i definitely want to get some different content i know you guys like the local stuff because you guys fish around here and uh you like to see what's going on but you know i, I really liked going to miami i really liked that i liked going offshore you know that's what i grew up doing and uh i really like going offshore and catching those mahi and stuff even though i get seasick i don't know if you guys noticed that but i had a i had an earplug in my ear all day that's for uh little tip for seasickness it actually worked well i don't know it could have been just been the placebo effect but i feel like it worked i did take dramamine like all day i stayed uh, with dramamine but i do get seasick unfortunately it's kind of crazy like i do all this fishing but i get seasick and uh but yeah the the one earplug thing i think worked but yeah we're ended off there guys i appreciate you guys watching stay tuned in for those giveaways and uh, we'll see you next time. Hey, let me know if somebody uses my spot planning of Saturday and catches some fish. Let me know how you do. Even if you don't catch some fish, let me know how you do. Let me know how it goes. Um, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.